Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Charles from the channel Books on Stereo, and I'm here to bring you my interview with the one, the only, Troy Duran. And I'm so excited for you guys to hear this interview. It's like listening to an audiobook in real life and in real time, if that makes any sense. But I will have to say this was filmed a little bit ways back. So some of the things that may have been mentioned in the interview have already come out. So I'm sorry about that. But without further ado, let's kick it back to past Charles and let's get into this interview. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Charles from the channel Books on Serial, and I have one of my favorite narrators here today on my channel. I have the one, the only Troy Duran. And I just finished listening to an audio book of yours, Ruthless Creatures by JT Geisinger, and it's like so cool nice. that I just talked to you right after finishing that amazing audio book. So how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Charles. Thanks. Yeah, appreciate uh, I appreciate you having me on. It was uh, it was really cool that when you mentioned that you uh, that you had listened to the uh, to the JT Geisinger. I'm like, okay, that's you know that's always uh, that's always a sure bet for me. Like anytime somebody says, oh, you know, you narrate audiobooks. What have, you know? What have you done? Yeah. Then if I can, you know, that like JT is one of the first ones I'll say, well, have you, have you heard of, you know, beautifully cruel or, or, uh, you know, any, any book that she, you know, that she's done, um, I'm happy to hang my hat on that. So we already know I'm a JT guy singer stand. Like I stand everything that she does. Like she could write a grocery list and I would think it's the best thing since sliced bread. But I do have an interview with the one and only JT guy singer on my channel where we talk about the first three books in the Queens and Monsters series and with little teases for the fourth book, which is already out by now. So sorry, we're a little bit late to the party, but I love JT guys here so much. If you haven't checked out her books, go check her out and then check out our interview, check out my interview that we did for the Addicted to Audio Book Club on my channel. I'm also curious too about your recording process. So how is that, how is that prep time and like how is it from, from when you get the manuscript to when you're recording the book? Well, I can tell you, I can tell you what, what, what I should tell you, but, but then I can tell you what I actually do. Uh, so what I really should do, I should like, I should, while I'm reading one book, I should read another book. Like while I'm narrating a book, I should be reading another book, but it's like, my brain has a hard time, um, doing that. You know, like I'm, I'm kind of like emotionally involved with a book that I'm reading, but, um, so what I end up doing is I scan through the book and then I, I just kind of get a flavor for, you know, what's this guy like? And, you know, and, and it's, it's fairly easy. Like as you, as you go through, especially as you're reading the woman's point of view, like oftentimes, you know, I'll be reading, I'm, I'm either doing a duet or a duel. And so when I, when I can read from the, the, uh, Theme, from my co-narrator's perspective, it gives me a really good idea what this guy's like. Is he an asshole or is he, uh, you know, is he an upstanding guy or is he the, you know, the strong silent type or, or whatever. So, you know, I just kind of like speed read through the book just to, you know, just to get the glimpse. But in my defense, I, I mean, I do like that, you know, that feeling of like when something is happening, I feel like it's happening to me. Like I'm experiencing it for the first time with you know with the listener and every now and then i'll i'll like you know i i like i'll get through you know most of the book and then find out and it, it'll say like he said and his irish broke and i'm like ah oh, shit i was supposed to be talking in an irish brogue all this time so you know i have to go back and i have to redo you know redo all my guys lines huh. but you know but you know often you know most of the time you know the the author will say this guy is Irish or this guy was raised in Belfast or this guy is Russian or whatever. But, um, you know, it's, I mean, it's worth it to me. I mean, I like, I like just reading and kind of like experiencing it along with, you know, along with the, uh, with the listener too. And do you prefer narrating standalones or series? Cause I know you have a couple, you have one series, the Kings mm -hmm. and Monsters with JT mm -hmm. that's currently ongoing. Yeah. Do you prefer as a narrator to kind of like stay with a bunch of characters I like as they I continue like the to series. Series, do you like just doing one like one sample and then you're moving on to the next set of stories i think i like i think i like series better well i don't know i mean there, there's something to be said for both but um but the series are really cool because by the time you're in the second book you're just like dropping into those characters like oh these are these are friends of mine you know like i know i know this guy and i know this girl and 
and I know, you know, I know all these people. And so it's easy for me to, you know, kind of like drop into them and, and uh, it's like familiar territory. So and do you have a preferred um, narrating format? Do you prefer doing dual or duet or do you prefer doing single narration? That's a good question because like, I don't know, like JT Geisinger, like all of those duets that I did with, you know, for her, I couldn't imagine them being any other way, you know, and, and especially when I, I like, I, I go back and I listen to the book and I hear what these, what these editors have done. It's like, yeah, that's, that's exactly the way that should, you know, that should sound. Um, but you know, there, I mean, there are some other books, like, I guess maybe it depends on the genre, right. Mm. Um, you know, like, uh, with, you know, with JT's books, it's obvious, it's easy to, you know, to understand why they're so cool, especially because like she writes great dialogue, you know, when she writes dialogue, especially, you know, like when it gets witty and, and, ah. and fun, like there was that, um, which one was it? It was, um, that's a, that's another problem. Like when I'm reading, when I'm reading, I, I read so many books that it's hard for me to keep them, keep them straight. But this one was, it was a JT book with Declan as the character. So we had, we had Liam was the first one, beautifully cruel. And then, Oh, okay. I know what series you're talking about. Yeah. Then Killian was, was the lead character. The next, that was, that was Liam's brother. And then Declan was the third one. And so I, it, which which one was that? That was um... okay. So I do want to jump in right here. So when Troy is talking about some of the characters from the Queens and Monsters series by J.T. Geisinger, he's referring to it in he's referring to the series by different names, but it is the Queens and Monsters series. So I just want to clarify that real quick. But that was anyway. So it it was really cool. I mean, there was a there was a scene in there where he's telling her this um this uh she's she's in the hospital and she's like would you please tell me a story and 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 he was her kidnapper and and uh you know but they you know obviously they had you know they had this chemistry and you know they had this you know this they were they were headbutting but um you know they did you know they did start to to really care about each other and he was there taking care of her and making sure that she was you know that she was safe and she asked him to tell a story and and he's uh He's telling that he's he says, you know, once upon a time there was this this wee, ugly, smelly camel, a camel princess. And he's like telling this story of this of this, you know, he, basically he's he's like making fun of her, saying that she's ugly and that she's smelly and that she's a camel princess and she expects everybody to be, you know, to to do everything for her. And that, you know, but he kind of is is begrudgingly telling her that he really finds her intelligent and charming and, and, uh, and funny. Those kinds of things were like so cool just because I could just totally be Declan. And as, as I'm reading, like as she, how she's responding to me, you know, kind of being a, you know, being a jerk, um, it made it so much fun. So, I mean, that, you know, that kind of thing is, is great for a duet, but then there's other books that are, you know, they're great to like, they, they're, they're, they're kind of like, they're told from third person omniscient and they, you know, they describe how the guy is feeling and they describe how the girl is feeling and, and, um, it's, it's just fun. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a different challenge. I mean, that's the cool thing about being a narrator. It's like, I get to play like, you know, uh, Robert De Niro, he plays his character and, and, uh, uh, you know, all these, these different, you know, Willem Dafoe plays his character and that's it. But as a narrator, I get to play all the characters. Like I get to be the bad guy. I get to be the good guy. I get to be the love interest. I get to be, you know, I get to be the goofy characters. I mean, all the, you know, all the different characters in the book, I get to do all that. And I get to be like, uh, Morgan Freeman, you know, uh, you know, saying, of course, he didn't know that there was a bomb around the corner. That's my that's my uh, my Morgan Freeman uh, impersonation. That was that was fun. <laughs> I had to say that was that was that was pretty good. That was really good. I appreciate that. You are you you're very kind. And I, I was just curious too. Um, are there any genres outside of romance? Like I know you've done a ton of romance audiobooks that you want to kind of delve mm -hmm. into as well. Like maybe YA, middle grade. 
some adult I, thrillers, uh, some literary fiction. So I do love like doing. Um, I do love doing thrillers. Uh, those are those are really cool. Um, I grew up reading. Uh, I grew up reading Tolkien, and then um, uh, Stephen King, and so so fantasy and horror are like huge you know huge for me that i you know that i really enjoy and then um shoot i mean all the all the books i read for for pleasure now are they're either like biography or history or um you know something like that so i mean i think those you know those would be fun just because they're like that would be the, the challenge would be to make those sound interesting, interesting. <laughs> you know i was yeah. gonna say i was like interesting but let me let me tell you though so i mean there is some really interesting stuff to be like read in history so and i do have a question too i know if i'm now in the audiobook space audiobooks become way more popular mm -hmm. becoming more and more in demand i you see more production companies like, independent of audible so do you kind of yeah. see like that uptick in your work or like you're seeing new and exciting books come your way that you probably wouldn't have seen a couple of years ago. You know, I haven't, I haven't personally seen, um, seen books coming my way, but I want to start working in that direction. Um, I listened to, uh, to the Sandman by Neil Gaiman and man, that was, you know, just what an incredible production. I mean, it's a full, cast production with all these um you know with all these uh great actors and um i actually like i tweeted out at uh, at dirk mags who's the guy who produced uh the sandman and american gods and uh i was something i i just said something like like uh you know i love this stuff it's you know it's my favorite and he said he said something like you know he he responded to me and i was like yeah. oh wow he responded that's so cool <laughs> i was like i was totally fangirling over uh, over this guy dirk mags but i think that um and 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 um uh, there was a podcast that i heard in um uh, that uh, audiophile magazine put out and they have some great interviews um they interviewed malcolm gladwell and have you 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 familiar with him? So this guy has a new company called Pushkin Audio or Pushkin Productions. And he all of his stuff is all really well produced. And it started out as as podcasts, but it's also uh, audiobooks. And so the 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 line is blurring between audiobooks and podcasts. And his, you know, his point was, you know, when they said, you know, what is the future of of audiobooks and he said well you know the future of audiobooks is going to be there it audiobooks and podcasts are going to the lines are just going to blur until they just don't exist and the second thing that's going to happen is that you know you have this uh, you have this this canvas available to you why settle for just a person talking why not make it a more immersive experience? You know, why not add music and sound effects and other voices and other characters and, and dialogue? And, and I think that we're seeing that happen now, you know, with JT Geisinger, where we're, you know, we're doing dialogue together. And I don't think it's going to be very long before we start seeing, you know, some sound effects and maybe some mood setting music. It doesn't necessarily have to be like a Steven Spielberg production, but there are times when I'm reading and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, you know, it would be cool to, you know, when I'm talking about, you know, they met in a train station to hear the sound of the trains, you know, going, you know, going out there and maybe a whistle in the background or something like that. Or if you're in a, in a hall, you know, to hear a little reverb on the voices. Um, and I think that, I think we're, we're going to be seeing a lot of that, especially because Spotify is, is, uh, getting into the, in, into the, uh, the audiobook world as well. And oh. so I think that they're going to, you know, these, these major companies are going to start hiring, uh, production companies that are going to, it's going to kind of like take the, um, uh, like, you know, how, how television stations will, will take a show that's produced oh. by, you know, like an ind independent producer. And so you'll start seeing these, these independent producers generating shows, you know, where it's, you know, instead of, 
friends and Beverly Hills 90210 or whatever. It's just going to be these franchises that are created by great producers. So, I mean, and that's, that's what I would like to, you know, be a part of is, you know, acting with, with people and, and, uh, and being a part of that stuff, you know, like creative stuff. So that's amazing. And like, um, a follow-up question to that is you see like the quality of audiobooks getting higher and higher. And I know mm -hmm. there's an other side that, um, for like the text to speech argument and how the two kind of, um, what heads like some some people think like oh you can just you just use text to speech you don't oh need... the text to speech yeah like ai it's like the and whole text to speech like argument that. and like mm -hmm. i think it was an article that was published a couple of weeks ago saying mm -hmm. like oh if it continues trending it may impede on actual human narrators ai is it, it is pretty amazing like now you can hear ai voices that you can't really tell are different or that are that are not human except for the fact that i don't know um you know they're, they're not quite there yet um uh, and i don't know that they ever necessarily will be but it's like you know when you're when you're watching tiktok videos and you hear the you hear oh, the yeah, voice the, the, the girl say, voice. yeah like you know she didn't know that he was right around the corner and it's like they they say it in exactly the same way each time you know they've got the brooklyn guy that says you know he was really surprised to see his girlfriend you know and yeah. It, it's it's like you can kind of tell just because they use the same you know the same cadence but this the thing is though you know i think that there are a lot of authors who you know you're if you're an author you're sitting there and you're saying okay i'm making a certain amount of money with my audio or with my with my ebook and i would like to make you know a i mean i think that you know authors would like to make more money but they would also like for more audience, you know, more people to, you know, they'd like to share their, you know, their passion with more people. It's not just about money. Right. And, and I feel the same way. It's like, I, I love the idea of bringing somebody's words into a new medium. Like, I feel like, wow, you know, they, they wrote these beautiful words and I get to, I get to kind of like bring it to, you know, to a new audience. And so that's, you know, that's really cool. Um, and I think, but at the same time, I mean, that comes with a cost. You know, like authors, it's it's not cheap to do that stuff. I, you know, because I have to make a living and heck, I have a personal assistant and I have an, an editor who I, you know, who I pay and um, and I'm, I'm like eternally grateful to them. And I owe them big Christmas gifts because of all the crap they have to listen to, you know, before you, before it gets to your ears, they've got to clean it up. But, um, uh, you know, so I have to make a living. I have to pay people. And so it costs a good chunk of money. And so when an author is sitting there saying, I don't know if anybody's going to buy my audiobook. Um, you know, so this is, you know, this is a this is a gamble, you know, unless you're, you know, JT Geisinger has, you know, she's probably worked for a long, a lot longer than most people realize to get to the stage where she's at right now. But you know, imagine all the people who are who are back in the beginning saying, This is my first audiobook. Well, you know, I'm, you know, Am I, am I willing to make a five thousand dollar gamble on this on this audiobook? Meanwhile, you have these AI companies coming in saying, "Well, oh, you know, you can pay, you know, five dollars a finished hour for your ten hour book. It'll cost you fifty bucks." I mean, there's got to be, you know, uh, authors out there that that are going to say, "Yeah, I'll try it." So I think that. I think that there are a certain number of narrators who are, you know, they're going to find that they're, that they're having a difficult time getting work. But, um, but I think that the, the, the narrators who are really good and uh, passionate about what they do and willing to, to do more to, you know, to deliver a, a better performance are going to, they're going to be fine. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's just that you, you know, you have to, you have to deliver the value, you know, I mean, people aren't, you know, when people, when people spend money on an audio book, they're, they want to hear, you know, entertainment, they want to hear emotion and, you know, they want to hear, you got to come with it. And, uh, you know, as long as you're coming with it, as long as you're, you know, you're giving a, a good, strong, you know, you, we're, we, so on our end, if we're expecting authors to invest in 
us to do, you know, to do great audio, we have to deliver great audio. And so, you know, we have to, I, I keep looking up because uh, I'll show you my, like, so okay. this is my microphone. This is like Hi. my, my fourth child. And, <laughs> uh, and then I've, you know, I, I have a whole, like, uh, I have my, my equipment. It's kind of, I look like Aww. a drunk. I, um, uh, I look like, a, like uh, the, the point of view of, of a guy who's like walking home at three o'clock in the morning going, I can't find the keyhole. <laughs> so anyway, if, if just trust me, this, this blurry bunch of lights equals like, you know, equipment that I've, that I've uh, invested, in, invested money in. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's the thing. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's been said anybody with a micro, you know, anybody with a, with a, a computer and a USB microphone can make money narrating audiobooks. And I mean, I, I don't know, that may be true, but but I sure wouldn't want to take the chance at, at, at doing that. I mean, I think that, I think the stakes are, or the, the, uh, it just means that the, you know, the, the, uh, the cost to entry in this game is, is a bit higher. You know, you have to be a better performer and deliver a superior, uh, superior audio product for your listeners. And, you know, I mean, listeners are, you have, you've been listening to audiobooks for for quite a while you listen to good ones and now you you know you know the difference between you know like we were talking about uh you know the people who swallow in between you know sentences or they you know they stutter or um you know the audio quality is not great you can tell and so i think you know we just need to be like as narrators we're not in danger as long as we like always try to be as good as we can at our game so you know I, yeah i don't think ai is gonna uh going to uh, destroy our livelihoods but um i think that uh that it will mean that you, you're just gonna if you're gonna beat the if you're gonna beat the text to speech you better be better than text to speech yeah and i completely 100 percent agree because one of the things i noticed over the past couple of years with audiobooks and like them getting bigger and bigger and bigger Mm -hmm. and you find more people, more readers choosing to only read audio. Mm -hmm. The narrator itself has become even sometimes more important. Mm -hmm. Not like overly important than the author, but let's say like an unknown author puts you on their audio book. Like mm -hmm. me as a listener, I know, hey, I trust Troy. I know mm -hmm. his quality. So I know nothing about this author, but I'll give it a try because I know the narrator. So do you find... Um, now, especially that some writers like write to your strengths or like stuff that like accents that you're good at or character oh, types yeah. that you do. Do you find that a little bit more to make it a, so you're like, oh, okay, this it feels like in your real house when you know writers are writing with you in mind to narrate the book. That was a weird feeling. The first time I heard somebody, somebody said something like, um, uh, we were, we were trying to schedule a book to be, uh, to be done. And they said, the author is taking it back because now that she knows that you're reading it, she's going to, uh, she's going to uh, kind of polish it and, and, uh, and write some of the stuff a little bit differently. And I thought, Whoa, I, now I, now I really better come with it because, you know, you know, if you've got, if you've got an author saying, okay, I'm, you know, I'm writing for you, I'm writing with your voice in mind. So, you know, then you know that, okay, you, you better be on your game now. Otherwise like, yeah, you, know, you got no excuse if somebody's, you know, if you got somebody writing for you. But and then uh, any upcoming projects that you can share or tease or anything that you that it's coming down the pipeline from you, you can let us know see. about. All right. So, well, I mean, there there are, you know, there there are a few that are uh, that are coming down the line that I think are really are really cool. Um, there's a book called Trusting You by Daphne Elliott. And. Uh, this one is, uh, it seems like it's, I haven't, I haven't read it yet. I've just read the, uh, you know, the first, uh, the first couple of chapters, but I really love it just because it's like, um, I mean, that all of the brothers are from Boston. And so I get to do a little bit of a, a little bit of a Boston accent. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, that one is, that one, it, it looks like something is going to be, is going to be really cool. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And then I've been doing this, um, there's this whole other, other uh, uh, 
set of books that I've that I've been doing, um, and it's the uh, the Zarkin uh, Warrior series, and this is a uh, this is a series of books about these. Um, so the Zarkin race created these um, uh, these these creatures as ways as as weapons to fight uh, hostile hostile uh, um, races but these uh, these uh, weapons got out of control and they started just like eating everything and so they had to create a whole other uh, series of uh, of warriors to fight these creatures um, but the creatures ended up destroying that you know that race as well but they keep going from planet to planet to uh to like eat all of their resources and so these these zarkin warriors are chasing this scourge across the universe to every planet they can go to to so they can kind of kind of try to save the planets and fix their mistake and uh they've landed on earth and um these zarkin warriors have have realized that they are um that they are compatible with human females and so um that's uh so there are lots of lots of love stories that are happening in here while they're fighting these uh these uh scourgy beasts and uh so that's kind of cool it's just like it's fun you know it's a, it's a fun you know it's a fun series and it's like the woman has uh just an amazing uh, uh imagination and um her name is uh, lanaya lanaya lee yeah her name is lanaya lee and so that's that's pretty cool. That's what I'm that's what I'm working on right now. And then um, there's another one. Uh, Bradley Carter uh, does the uh, the Bodhi Crocodile uh, series, wow. and this is kind of like a uh, this is like uh, a thriller uh, kind of a book. And uh, yeah, you I think you might in, you might enjoy okay. these. And these actually the first two books. There's Bodhi Crocodile, and then there Bodhi Crocodile Two was. Um, was with um who's the bad guy uh enzo the sting was the uh, was the uh, the bad guy in in bodhi 2 but both of those won um audiophile earphone awards um okay. and uh, it's just like his writing is is real kind of like um uh, uh thriller noir right and uh or detective noir style of uh <clears throat> of uh of writing and so i just finished the third book in that series. So if you got the first one and the second one, then by the time you're done with those, uh, even as fast as you listen, um, <laughs> you will, the, it'll probably be out. I mean, I think it's, I mean, I, I uh, submitted it to the, uh, to the audio audible gods, I guess uh, about a week and a half ago. So it should be, it should be hitting the stands pretty soon. So okay. those are the ones that I'm, that I'm working on right now. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited about all the you know all the books that that I uh, that I do that are coming out. It's really cool. It's like I you know I'm working on on this right now, and it's like this is my whole focus. And then a book comes out, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, I did that. That was that was a blast. So, so and to throw you a curveball, and my mm -hmm. final question: What are some of your favorite audiobooks? They could be audiobooks that you have done, or some of your favorite audiobooks that you want to recommend, either me or my viewers. Okay. Okay. So of the audio books that I have done that I would recommend, I would say if you like, if you like a funny, um, romantic, uh, action, uh, book, you cannot go wrong with Eve Longley. Um, she does this whole series of, um, she does uh, shifter romance uh, books and she also does this uh it's called welcome to hell series and it's like this whole she's got her whole story about you know who uh who lucifer really is and he's like this funny guy he's like uh, uh like lucifer is married to gaia uh you know the earth goddess and um and then you know he has all of his minions and Hell is really not like, you know, it's like you want you think, oh, you know, you, you're, you know, you're bad enough to go to hell and you're just, you know, burning. Well, they got these different circles of hell and like, like the one, 
most of us like so first of all like almost nobody makes it to heaven and the people who make it to heaven are just kind of like who wants to know them anyway because they're boring <laughs> and so like most of the people who go to hell like land and there's, there's like the ninth circle of hell the seven the eighth the seventh the sixth fifth and fourth and like when when you get to the when you get to like the the first circle of hell no i think it, i think it's I don't know if it's if it's the bad ones are in the ninth circle or the bad ones are in the in the first circle. But there are the ones like, you know, Hitler and Stalin. Those those are the guys who are like eternally in boiling vats of oil. <laughs> but the rest of us are just like in places that are pretty much like our like like the way we live now, where the plumbing is just not very reliable and the mail <laughs> service is not great. You know, where you just kind of like, ah, you know, it's you know it's hard to find a good cut of steak or something you know it's a the um you know those kinds of things but they always you know they always have this like you know the stories that she writes is always like um you know this demon comes up to uh you know to to earth to find um to find a certain person and then ends up falling in love with you know with somebody and eve longley is just uh she's such a great writer she's just funny as hell i mean she's so funny that when you when i when i read these books it's like i don't know it's it's just like a vacation for me like i get to read these books it's it's fun you know it's fun for me so i think those are those are great and then anything um anything that neil gaiman uh wrote to me is like that's you know american gods i could listen to that over and over again and then the Sandman, the same thing. Listening to the Sandman is is just like, you know, it's it's just a great adventure. Those are the books that I listen to when, like, when I'm mowing the lawn or, or uh, something like that. Well, Charles, thank you, thank you for the time. It, it really was a good time hanging out with you. I appreciate it. No, no, thank you for coming on my channel and for you guys watching. If you want to follow Troy on any of his social media, they'll be all linked down to the in the description box down below. But thank you again, Troy, for coming on my channel. I will leave all the recommendations that he mentioned too down there, so you definitely go should buy those. All right. Follow GT Geisinger. Or come back to my channel when we have her on my channel. Oh, talk sweet. all things um, Queens and Monsters, narrated mm. by Troy himself. But thank you again, Troy, so much for coming on my channel, and I'll catch you guys off with a brand new video. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Take care.